guys happy new year it's Cindy Utter with my artsy endeavors and we are here to do another crazy eight um, I found the page I went through and here's our page this was last month's or month before I don't think I did one in December I can't remember anyways hey look at that I rhymed <laughs> anyways let's get our eight chosen we've got one we've got two we've got three four five six seven and eight all right let's see what we've got add random words in three areas use a stabilo pencil to add shadows use dots to outline the focal points stamp and gesso with mark making tools use cardboard to paint with use a palette knife with modeling paste Use black gesso in a few spots and do the last prompt again and pick one more. All right, so let's pick one more. Use pri oh, do not use primary colors. Okay, well, that's the first one we're going to do is we're not going to use primary colors. All right, so um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp into gesso with mark making tools. And then I'm going to use some black gesso in a few spots. Uh, let's see. Then I'll use some cardboard to paint with. Then I'll use a paddle, uh, palette knife with modeling paste. Um, let's see. Uh, use a Stabilo pencil. Uh, add dots random words hmm this is going to be an interesting page and do the last prompt again which is a stabilo pencil and i actually have i wish i knew my where my red blue and green were but i have white and i have black that i can get to so let me find some of this stuff i've got to get out my gessos i need to get out some cardboard some mark making tools modeling paste some words and we're going to get to creating this page all right i'll see you in a minute all right guys here we are i think i have almost everything but if not that's okay first of all i'm hanging out with my cup of tea i decided this year that i'm i've got to stop drinking so much soda so um yeah i set it up so i have a teapot this is going to be one of my first um stamping in gessos so first thing i need to do is get some gesso on this page mm, that's hot all right let's get some gesso out i'm just gonna wow that one needs to go in a <laughs> that one needs to go in murphy's oil soap let's try this one this one's better all right, so let's get some gesso on this page and let's put some marks in it, right? That's the first thing we're doing. And I'm going to put the gesso on a little bit heavier so that maybe I can, you know, distinguish the marks a little bit more. First, I got to get the first coat on. And then we'll put it down a little bit heavier. Now we're going to put it down a little bit heavier. Now I may have to take time in between this to get it to dry. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see how well the heat gun does. And we have a bristle from my brush. All right. So let's see what this does. So the first one was stamp and gesso with a mark making tool. This is one of my mark making tools. And I'm hoping this little green and blue or purple will come out. Onto the gesso, we'll find out, won't we? All right. All right, none of the paint came off, but, and I don't think you guys can see this. I know you can't. Let's see if I can see it. See the circles? So it has all of those bubble wrap circles on it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this white with black gesso. But before I do that, um, I need to dry this real quick. So I'll be right back. All right, so now it says to use black gesso in a few spots, right? All right, so our first one was stamp into gesso with a mark making tool. Second one is use black gesso in a few spots. So what I'm going to do, my gesso, this is getting old. 
Um, I'm going to take some black gesso and I'm just going to go over this. This was a pot, like a, it's a silicone pot holder or something you can set your pans on. I don't ever use them for that. Whenever I look for them, I'm looking for a different design. So let's do this. We're going to put our black gesso in a few places. And then we're just going to take it and use up what's on here. Just kind of random. All right. All right, so there's our black gesso. Now this I just wipe off with one of my rags. And if I get too much on it, like down in the holes, I can go ahead and throw it in my water to be cleaned. So that's cool. All right, so we did black gesso. Um, now it says use cardboard to paint with. But before I do that, I'm going to dry this gesso. Okay, now it said to use cardboard to paint with, right? It didn't say you can't put something on your cardboard to paint with. So just keep that in mind. When you hear a prompt, think about it in a different way. You don't have to think literally of using cardboard to paint. Another thing I could have done is I could have gotten a piece of cardboard and painted it and used it on my piece, but that's not what I wanted to do. So um, the paints I've got out here are, this one is teal which, yeah, that's kind of a blue, but, and then I have purple, and then this one is a black flash, and these are both the color shifts, so I want to play with those. So let's take the purple first. I'll put a little bit on my palette, and then I'm going to use just a small brush to get some little holes painted so I can make some marks with some paint and cardboard and actually I'm, I'm planning on using the sides of the cardboard also so so let's do this it doesn't do a whole lot but it's good I like it all right okay so there's that Put this in here I want to take some of this teal that I've made a mess out of already um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the side of this cardboard, I think this side, um, and we're going to get some, some of that teal paint on there. Okay, we've got some teal paint on there, and we're just going to paint with cardboard. So there's our painting with um, cardboard. Might as well put it on the cover, right? Okay. So we've used, we've stamped into gesso. We've used black gesso for a few spots. We've used cardboard to paint with. Now we have to use a palette knife with modeling paste. And what I'm going to do first is dry this up. Alright, this is going to take a second. Alright, so I got out some, this is not regular modeling cream, this is more of a, it's a modeling cream, but it's from Viva. I've got copper and raspberry. Um, these are two stencils that, um, I actually drew the mushrooms, and my husband had them made into stencils for me, which I thought was really cool. So, um, I am going to use these. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to put copper on the top of the mushroom. I don't know what this is going to look like, but you know what? We'll find out. And this is the place to do exactly this. You know, test out things, see how it works. Um, if it works good, great. You can use it on another journal page or another art project. If it doesn't work so good, well, you learned that it didn't work so good, right? All right, so there is the copper on the top of that one. Now I'm going to use this raspberry for down on the bottom. Let's see what this looks like. It should be interesting, don't you think? It may be ugly. It may be awesome. It may be eh. It's alright. 
Let's see. Hmm, I think that's pretty cool. So I'm going to have to wipe, wash that off. Um, with my stencils, with any stencils, um, I take and, hang on, let me dry this real quick. I um, take, I don't normally wash my stencils, which is fine. Um, but what I will do is when I use any type of a modeling paste or anything that can, you know, get hard or, or be stiff, um, that's when I'll use it. Now, this is going to mess up this other one a little bit, which that's okay. I'm okay with that. We're just going to put it right there. We're going to go back to the copper on the top. So yeah, these um, stencils I'll have to wash off because I am actually using a modeling paste. Lots of lots of modeling paste. Um, so I'll have to wash these ones off, which is no big deal. Works with baby wipes. Alright, so let me just finish this up here. Now I try to take as much as I can off the stencil. Um, just that way I have less to wash off. Alright, so the copper is done. I'm just wiping my palette knife off on a rag I have over here, which, you know, it works for me. So, alright, so let's take, we don't need that much. Let's take our raspberry and do our bottoms. Why not? I've never seen a copper and raspberry mushroom, but hey. Maybe we can start a new trend. <laughs> I laugh at that because, yeah, I don't even like mushrooms. All right. I'm going to pull this up. Come on. And there we go. We got our two mushrooms. So these I'm going to put face to face. Um, now what I want to do is I want to take, go back to this uh, purple that I had. And I'm going to go ahead and actually paint in the bottom of that mushroom. And then I'm also going to take the copper, and I think I might um, paint in either that or the teal, uh, paint in the, the circles on the top of the mushroom. But give me a second, I gotta clean off those stencils. I'll be right back. I decided I'm gonna show you what I do to clean off the stencils. I've got three different uh, baby wipes here. I'm gonna take one of the stencils, and this is all I do to them to get them clean, is I'm gonna wipe all this off. See how quick that turns? Oops, get back there. That turns solid so quick that if you don't wipe these off, you end up with um, with modeling paste stuck on your stencils. And that eventually will cause issues with the stencil. So there's that and that. It's not perfect, but you know what? It's clean. I have no issue with that. All right, let's do the next one. Now the next one should only have to have the one side because I didn't lay it on the other. So I'm just going to flip one of my things around. And these stencils I have to be a little bit careful with because see that? There's lots of lines in there. This one I might have to take to the sink and use my light scrubby on it. Just because I don't want to ruin the stencil by um, messing it up like I did right there. Alright, so basically, yeah, I'm going to do the same thing, only this one I'm going to have to take to the, um, to the sink. But I'm getting the majority of it off now. Um, whether or not I take it to the sink, that just depends. Alright, so that one's done. Just wipe off the back. And here they sit next to, um, they're just sitting on a towel. So let's finish this. Let's, I'm going to take a paintbrush, uh, just a little one if I can find one. I'm going to take a paintbrush and I'm going to take that purple. Actually, you know what, I'm going to take the purple in the, in the round parts. Alright, so this is my modeling paste um, jump, or what I should say, prompt. I'm just going to paint in those little things with the purple I have over here, the color shift. I like this color shift paint. If you haven't gotten it, um, it's actually really cool to work with. And I just got it all over there, but I don't care. Um, 
I got it at, I believe, Michael's. And um, I've made some stuff with stencils with it, and it's just absolutely beautiful when you, it dries and you hold it up to the light because it changes so much. So just a little bit more in this one. Now here where it's all messed up, I don't think I'm going to do anything with that. I think I'm going to put this here, though. Yeah, with these um, Crazy 8s, just have fun. You know, the prompts are really there for guidelines. Um, you know, if, if, like for example this one. I decided I didn't want to use just plain old white modeling paste. I use modeling cream. It works. Um, you don't have to put mushrooms on yours. You can put whatever design you want on it. Um, I enjoy using stencils with modeling paste or modeling cream. I think it looks good. There's one more right here that I'm going to have to get. Just this one. We'll just get some in there. All right, let me wipe, clean out my brush. And now I'm going to take that teal that we have. This is where I used it to um, load my piece of cardboard. I'm going to take that teal. I'm going to come down here. And I think this is just going to help see the mushroom a little bit better. Maybe I'm wrong. I have to tell you guys, for this year, I have cut down on so many videos that I was making that um, it's crazy, but I'm really glad I don't need that much. Um, I don't need that much. I don't want to say creativity, but basically um, work. Um, I just, I enjoy painting, I enjoy playing, so that's what I'm going to do. And I think it'll be better for me in the long run. Um, my fibro and my back pain have all been giving me really bad fits lately. So I want to make sure that um, whatever I'm doing I have the ability to do. And last year was really pushing it, especially toward the end of the year. Um, you guys noticed my videos weren't quite as I was not happy <laughs> I was going through about a depression and you know try to create when you're doing that and especially you know to meet a deadline it, it just felt forced to me and I didn't want that so I'm still gonna try to do a chronic pain series um, you know maybe I'll do a little bit on depression I don't know but just something different. Now, should I put that? You know what? I think I'm going to put copper in those leaves. <laughs> Oops. i got to move them up so you guys can see them. Sorry. All right. Let's take the copper. I'm actually going to take it right out of the jar of the modeling paste. I'm just going to take some of this into my brush. And I'm going to do the leaves. So just try to put a little bit in, a little bit of color in there. Just a little bit of color so that we know they're leaves. Copper leaves, but they're leaves nonetheless, right? Alright, so that's got to go in my water. Um, and I cleaned it off. Perfect. All right, let me dry this up, and let's see. What's our next prompt? Um, that was use a palette knife with modeling paste. The next one is add three random word, add random words in three areas. So give me a second. I'm going to dry this up. I'm going to grab my, rant, my words, and we'll see what we find for those. I'll be back. All right, so before I put my words on, I've been looking at this, and the mushrooms are bugging me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this black flash is what it's called and I'm going to paint the tops of those mushrooms let's see what it looks like let's see what it looks like oh that's all right that works so I'm gonna just try to get these painted up 
gonna take me a couple minutes. I hope you guys don't mind hanging around. Hanging around. I'm just chilling, enjoying my day. It's beautiful outside, though. So um, I don't know if I've told you guys, but uh, my husband, well, actually, he's working on a she shed for me. And in that she shed is going to be my stained glass supplies. So I might um, do a video or two about, you know, stained glass. And I did it for almost 15 years and I enjoyed it. So I am. Um, let me go ahead and paint these up and I'll be right back. All right, so. You guys remember last year I did a um, a video on words? I just found these the other day. <laughs> it's more words. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, what I did is I found these three words, because I have to use three words, random, random words in three areas. Well, what I've got is create um, yourself and dream. And what I'm going to do is create your dream. So we'll put the self back in the box. Here's the create. I know these are going to be random, but that's okay. At least we know what it means, right? So create. Create. So let's put this down. Um, I'm just going to use tacky glue. I really don't want to get the matte medium out. Ugh. Just going to use tacky glue. So yeah, I finished painting these mushrooms and I think they look a lot better. But there's still more work to do to them, but that comes toward the end. So we're going to create your and then lay down there. Your And dream. Now this one's a sticker. So that one, all we have to do, I gotta bring my garbage back over here, is just stick that. It says create your dream. Okay. Now it just said to add random words in three areas. So one, two, three area. <laughs> that works, right? Alright, so next it says Use dots to outline all of your focal points. Well, I'm not going to outline these with dots, but what I will do, um, as soon as I find my Posca, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. So we're going to use dots. I'm not necessarily outlining things, but, you know, Cindy's got to have dots, right? Gonna make this a pair of mushrooms. All right, so there's my dots there. Um, I want to do dots here, but I need a black. This one is, <coughs> pardon me. This one is called a postilla. Um, it's something that um, Gina found for me in a Daiso store. Um, out in California and basically to me okay this is a Posca look at the difference there's not much right so this works just like the Poscas do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline my words with dots because pretty much my mushrooms and my Um, words are my focal points, right? Do, do, do. I don't want to do white on this because it definitely wouldn't show up. I think my puppy dog is coming back in. So if you hear little feetsies, that's what it is. And it is. Good girl. She just got up in her bed to lay down. All right, so we use dots. Again, we didn't outline, but we've got dots on there. Um, use a Stabilo pencil to add shadows. 
Okay, well I have three Stabilo pencils here. I actually found my blue and my white. I still can't find my red and green though, but anyways. Um, I'm going to start out with the black. And first thing I'm going to do is sharpen it. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to start out with the black and my shadows are going to be through here. I guess, right? And then I'm going to put some along the bottom. My shadows are going to be all through here. And on the bottom. Take my water brush. Apparently my large water brush. I thought I had my small one. Let's change that out. The large one just gives too much water for what I'm doing right now, so um, I really want just a smaller one. And this one gives plenty of water, as you can see. A lot of Stabilo I put on there. Maybe a little too much, but hey, it's all good, right? I'm just gonna move some of the move some of the shadow out. Just move it out and use it up. Use up that color. No issue. Same here. I'm just gonna put this color out. Yeah, this is something I'm not good at, is shadowing. I have a really hard time with it. I either use too much or not enough or it looks crazy or sun's coming from 12 different directions or, you know. So, yeah, that's not something I'm great at. I do want to practice it and see if I can get, you know, uh, better at my shadows. Um, let me dry this because this is, oops. It actually dries quite quickly, but I want to make sure it's all dry. Um, let's see. Let me dry it. I'll be right back. All right, so that was use my Stabilo pencil. And then it says, do the last prompt again and pick one more. So it said Stabilo pencils, but I'm going to do highlights um, instead of shadows. So basically what I'm going to do is just go in here. There's some different spots that I think need to be, a, you know, have a highlight to them or just a little bit of white or just something. So I'm just going to throw some random white dots around here. Just random. And actually what I'm doing is covering up these blank spots. Um... You know some of them where the stencil was and just you know doing randomness randomness all right i'll put a couple along here one right there all right so that was doing my second that prompt again i want to do something more up here but then it says do the last prompt again which i did and then it said pick another one and it says use do not use primary color so that is done as far as the steps. Um, I can't use primary colors. White's not going to work. Black, I could do. I just have to be careful with it. And I just want to kind of get these to stand out a little bit more. Let's see how it works. I just did very little Stabilo. So yeah, see that works. I just did random tiny, tiny amounts. Oops, that one got a little bit more. So I'll spread it out. Craziness, craziness. So yeah, what I was saying is I have a she shed um, that my hubby's 
working on right now. He's actually building shelves and stuff in there for my glass. Um, I did stained glass for almost 15 years, believe it or not. And because of my back injury, um, at that time I couldn't do it. I honestly don't know if I'll be able to do it now. But hey, you know, a girl can dream and and try. That's, that's all I can do. And uh, if it doesn't work, well, then we'll turn it into a different kind of a she shed. Maybe it'll be my outdoor painting shed with easel and lots of paints and I'll make a mess. and You know what I'm saying? So, either way, um, the she shed's going to work. Or I should say the shed. Um, if it doesn't work for me, uh, my husband has enough crap outside that he definitely could use it. So, you know, either way, it's going to work. So... Right, I just want to take this color down. All right, I think I am done with this month's challenge, which is Crazy 8. Um, I will put the Crazy 8 prompts for this page um, in the description box on the video. Hopefully I remember, but I write them down and then I, you know, put a month or two, so... That's what I do. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, let me see something. I, you know what? I'm not done yet. Hold on. I want to take... I have some of this paint left over here on my palette. And let's use it up. And this is where, you know, the crazy eights are wonderful. You can just do what you want to do. I mean, like I said, those prompts are just um, basically to get you started. Um... It makes you maybe put things together that you normally wouldn't do and find out the results are good or the results are bad or, you know, it's something that you'll never do again or you'll do it in a few other art pieces, you know. So use those prompts in that way. Um, use them as just an exercise and see what it'll do for your, your art. See if you've learned something new or... Um, you know, you enjoyed a certain process. Why not? That's what art's all about, is the exploring and the trying and the doing. And, you know, let's have fun with it. Art's supposed to be fun. It should not be stressful. Um, it should not be mandatory. Um, it should be something that either get you out of your head or um, a freedom just to play. Play like a, you know, a kindergartner. Why not? You know, uh, it doesn't hurt. Um, stop comparing yourself to other people. It's not worth it. Trust me. Um, just do what you want to do and have fun with the process. That's what I enjoy about the art. All right, yeah, so I didn't use them all up, but I like that. It kind of pulls the whole page together a little bit. So, all right, guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Um, as always, don't forget um, to have fun. That's what life's all about. Happy creating, and I will see you guys next month. Take care. Bye.